Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscarini, and for our unit on exploring contact and non-contact forces, today we're going to start investigating static charge. In the previous lesson, we have introduced the concept of non-contact forces. We have seen the example of magnetism, a magnetic force. Today, we're going to look at another non-contact force. And the purpose of today's lesson will be to recognize the effects of static charge, explain, at least to some extent, how static charge can be generated, although it will be in the next lesson that we're going to see in detail how static electricity really happens, and eventually we're going to use evidence to develop ideas about static charge. So, in these days of lockdown, you probably have a lot of time to take care of your own homes, during all of those kind of chores like cleaning up. For instance, you see my bookshelf behind me, and uh, it does attract a lot of dust, so periodically I need to clean it. And for instance, I can use one of these um, uh, dust cloths, okay? So let's see what happens if I use it right now. Okay, here and over here. And as you can see, now my dust cloth is dirty. The dust, which was previously on the shelf, is over here. But how did that really happen? Why is dust attracted, sticks to this piece of cloth? The answer is static electricity. So we're going to see how we can use static electricity to attract things. So, uh, in order to see this, today we're going to use something which is usually associated with the idea of fun, that is, a party balloon. Now, let's imagine you have your birthday party and you're inviting your friends and you fill the rooms with colored party balloons or it's the end of the school year, it's very hot and you fill all those water balloons and you do um, a water balloon fight with your friends, okay? So, today we're going to use a party balloon to explain static electricity. And this is already the tough part for a lot of students. Blowing a party balloon and then tying it up takes a lot of exercise, but looks like I've been successful. So let's see what we can do now with this party balloon. Okay, so let's investigate about static electricity. For this activity, which you can really uh, easily do at home, you just need very small scraps of paper, so you take any type of paper, the lighter the better, and you cut in very, very small pieces, okay? The smaller the better. You put it on the flat surface, and the next thing you need is a party balloon, like this one. Now, you don't need to overinflate it, okay? As long as it's nice and tight, and you tie your knot over here, okay? The next step is to how can we say, charge the balloon. In order to do that, you need to, uh, for instance, rub it against your hair. I do recommend that you wash your hair. Um, uh, dry, clean air uh, really uh, works the best in these cases. So let's do this. And let's see what happens now to the pieces of paper. And as you can see, the paper gets attracted by the balloon and sticks on the balloon. So, thanks to this simple demonstration, we are now able to answer this question. What happens when you rub a party balloon against your hair and then bring it closer to small pieces of paper? And as we all observe, and this is again, it's something that you can try at home, the pieces of paper will jump towards the balloon, okay? So they will get attracted. What it means, means we're, go we're seeing a new type of force, a new type of non-contact force, because it's acting at a distance. Of course, this is not magnetism, because neither of these materials are magnetic, a uh, party balloon is made of rubber, which is not magnetic, and pieces of paper are made of paper, which is not magnetic. So it's a totally different kind 
of known contact force. We're going to call this contact, non contact force static electricity. And static, uh, why static? It will be more clear in the next lesson. Just remember, it's static means something that is not moving, it stays there. Of course, it doesn't refer to what happens to the object, but actually refers to these um, uh, quantities known as charges. So, this effect is known as static charge. And as we saw, it is another example of an unknown contact force. In the next two segments of this video, we're going to see two other demonstrations that again, you can easily set up at home to show how static electricity can act at a distance. As we saw, static electricity is a non contact force. So it's a force that can act at a distance without touching something. And we can use this to our advantage to make some sort of a magic trick. So for instance, let's imagine you have a soda can. This is by no means product placement, of course. Okay, an empty soda can, of course. And you place it on a flat surface like this table. Once again, what you need is a party balloon. Okay. So, party balloon, soda can, and what you're going to do, you're going to rub, again, the party balloon against your hair. Remember, hair which should be clean and dry for the best effect. And now, I'm bringing this balloon close to the soda can. Let's see if something happens. Another nice trick you can try to do at home with static electricity is with water. So let's imagine you go to the kitchen or your bathroom and you have your water tap and you open your water tap and the trick here is really to have a stream of water which has to be as thin as possible but still a bit continuous like this one, okay? And then again, you need your party balloon and what I'm going to do, I'm, get, I'm going to rub it against my head. As you probably can hear it. And then you bring the balloon close to water. Let's see what happens to the water. The water is bending towards the balloon. So, thanks to these demonstrations you've seen in the previous segment of this video, you know now that we can indeed roll a soda can without touching it. Again, this is something you can do very easily at home. You just need your party balloon, you need uh, some hair against which you have to rub it, and an empty soda can. And probably you notice that once you bring the balloon close to the soda can, the soda can was rolling towards the balloon in the same way the stream of water was bending towards the balloon. What have we done so far does not complete by any means the topic of static electricity. It's just a first glimpse into it. In our next lesson, we're going to see this in more detail, but more explicitly, we're going to see why static electricity happens. But at this point, you already have some idea on how we can make static electricity and what kind of um, uh, effects it can cause. So this is something I will leave you with as a small exercise to do at home because at this point we have explored, at least we started to explore static electricity and we have explored at length magnetism. And maybe what you could do now is just to make us a very short list of what are the similarities and what are the differences between these two. So what do they have in common? Okay, static electricity magnetism and in what they differ. And uh, what I want you to do once you finish this list and just keep it with you when we're going to view our next video. But for today, that's all. Goodbye from Mr. Buscarino.